One of the things that I talked about a little bit when it came to Photography One with depth of field, it's how deep you can see into the back of the picture. And uh, you can change three different settings on your camera in order to make a picture uh, be blurry in the background or uh, and the foreground before the focal point or uh, totally clear in before and after the focal point. So you can also do that with Photoshop. We're going to show you here on the picture of this bird called an egret. So let's open it up in Photoshop right here. And first thing we're going to do is save this as uh, egret working. All right, so we'll do that. Working. And I want you to change this from a JPEG, see what I'm doing right here, to a Photoshop file. Okay, because we're going to have different layers and that kind of thing on here. All right. So we're going to go into the Google Drive, Comtech Photography 1, oh, no, Photoshop 1, and save it in here as a Photoshop file. Okay, it has to be format Photoshop. Some people think that just because they type PSD on the end that suddenly it's a Photoshop file. That is not the case. You have to say that in the format you want it to be a Photoshop file. So we hit save. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to we're going to right click or control click on the background and turn it into a smart object. And we may as well change layer 0 to egret. All right. Now, what the heck is a smart object? Smart objects allow you to make changes to the picture but not to the original file. It's very much like Lightroom does. You know how in Lightroom you can change all of your, your pictures but the actual original file doesn't get changed? This is like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a blur to it and normally if you just did it on a regular uh, JPEG or regular layer without being a smart layer it would blur it and that would be it. So uh, you couldn't make any changes to that. But just like Lightroom, uh, if you make it a smart object, you go in there, it has the changes that you've made already, and you can adjust them. So we're going to do that. Okay, so now that we have it, this as a smart object, uh, go Command-0 to make it large. And we're going to go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and Iris Blur. Okay, now you'll see what it's done to the sides right at the moment. You'll see that it's, it's made everything outside of this ellipse has now become a blur. So grab around the middle. Don't grab exactly this because you'll change these settings. I'm going to grab around here and drag upwards and put this ellipse around the egret. So I'm going to drop it off right there. Okay. So now, and you'll notice that it actually takes just a little bit of time, probably, for your computer to update. So uh, don't worry about that. And we have a couple of sliders and pins and everything like that. So first thing is, we're going to grab this ellipse by grabbing it out here, pulling it on in. So it's basically just on the egret, and I'm going to pull this up even a little bit more. Okay. This dot right here changes the feathering and you can let me just pull this all the way in see how it is totally got the blur going all the way in there and you can pull this back now something that I have discovered about this uh, blur tool is that when it comes to undoing something you've got one step basically if you want to undo it so I go command Z there it is if I go command Z again it goes back to what I had before so if I go if I go Shift Command Z, nothing happens. So you can only go back and forth between the last two steps that you have done. And of course, you can hit Cancel. That's up here, and it goes right back to the beginning, right? Or it gets rid of the blur uh, entirely. Now, why did I bring this up? I brought this up because there's a cruel little thing here. If you grab the feathering tool and you pull it 
all the way to the end so that it's exactly over the other dot. These two end up together and you can't get them apart. Okay, the only thing that you can do is, is undo it, Command Z, it undoes it. But if you do anything other than that, if you start moving these guys, that's it, they're together. I've never been able to get them apart. If you know how to get them apart, please put it in the comment section. I'd love to learn. Okay, so anyway, we're going to just adjust our feathering so it doesn't look too fake. Right here, maybe pull that back. Maybe even pull the ellipse a little bit wider out and then bring the feathering in. Yeah, I'm kind of liking that. Okay, and you know what? That is quite a drastic difference for the blur. So I'm going to bring that down. I'm actually going to bring it down to five. Okay, there it is. So the blur is down to five and I'm going to click OK. There it is. Not bad, not bad. So notice here, I have a smart filter right here at this point. If I turn it off and on, you'll see what it did. You'll see that the rest of the area outside the picture is blurry. But you know what? I would actually kind of like a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is double click on the blur gallery, not the smart filter, okay? The blur gallery, double click on that and we go back to the blur tool. Please notice that we have exactly the settings as we left them, where the blur is five pixels right at the moment. Okay, so we can grab this, move it around. If you let go, it adjusts it. That is way, way too much. I just want a little bit more. Matter of fact, I'm just gonna set it to six. It wasn't five. It's gonna, I'm gonna put it to six and say, okay. And there it is. And you can even uh, go back and see the, the difference between all of them. And there it is. That's using smart filters and blurring the background. Please uh, save this and submit it into Google Classroom.